Plugins can have different types of state, which is useful in various situations, yet often overlooked. I suppose that has something to do with certain types of state not being an obvious solution to some, but I can only guess, of course. My name is Florian Brugala, and in this video, I want to show you the different types of plugin state, why you should care, and how to implement them in a Juice project with a few practical examples. If you're interested in that kind of content, you should stick around and check out my YouTube channel as well, where I also drop videos like this sometimes. Link in some corner of the video as well as the description. Before diving into the examples, I would like to give you a brief overview of the different types of plugin state. Firstly, we have the state of each instance. Then we have the state of each plugin. Also the state of each developer and what I call the global state. The most well-known and prominent state a plugin can have is the state of each instance. Every instance of a plugin that was instantiated in a DAW has a unique combination of parameter values that sets it apart from every other instance of the same plugin, regardless of whether it was loaded in the same session or not. I'll not go into detail about this type of state because Josh has already talked about it in some of his other videos. He will put a link to one of these into some corner of this video and the video description. Then there is also the state of each plugin in general, here shown as a yellow rectangle surrounding both instances of plugin A. As can be seen, they don't share the same parameter values, but there can be shared state. The next type of state is the state of each developer. It works rather similarly, but instead of communicating information between multiple instances of the same plugin, it is communicated across more than one plugin with a unique plugin ID and everything. And lastly, there is what I call the global state. Not to be confused with global variables in C++ of course, we generally want to avoid those. Plugins have come a long way since the VST standard was invented by Steinberg. When the first synthesizers came out, no one would have expected plugins to have features like oversampling or parameter smoothing one day. Nowadays, you sometimes even get fully resizable plugins that respond dynamically to whatever bounds you set them to. Considering all the wildly different screen sizes and differences in looks between platforms, it makes sense to just make the user themselves responsible for whatever bounds they enjoy for the plugins. This is a plugin I am working on at the moment. It is called Manta and I am going to release it very soon. It is open source and free and you can check it out via the link in the description. As you can see I can drag it around and it automatically figures out some new bounds for the various UI elements on its interface. If I close the window and open it again, you can see that the plugin remembered its bounds. You might be tempted to think that this is not a big deal. This could easily be done by saving the bounds of the plugin with the state of the parameters whenever the plugin is being resized. A lot of developers don't seem to think of this when releasing their plugins though. I know that because I don't only develop plugins but also test and use them a lot as a musician and sound designer. I want to show you something though. When I load another instance of my plugin, the new instance also picks up the same bounds that were saved from the last time that I dragged an instance of the plugin. And that makes a lot of sense because if you think of it, typically when a user resizes their plugin, then it's because they just want to find the size that works for them, for their screen and everything like I said before, and then they don't want to touch that anymore. That's why I would say that this is a crucial type of state in modern plugins. Let me show you how to do it. So this is my processor.h in a juice project it is often called plugin processor.h. There I define juice application properties to be app props and made an instance of it. Now in the constructor of the processor in the CPP file, I'm making a juice properties file options object called options and I'm telling it about the basic properties of the plugin, like what is the name of the plugin, what is the ex extension and yeah, what is the folder where I put all the custom stuff. In my case, that is my developer name Ugala slash the plugin name juice plugin name. Also some other stuff. Then you put that into your app props. In order to find that folder, you have to go to C, user, your username, and then app data, which is a hidden folder. If you don't enable that somewhere in the options of folders in general, somewhere here. And then you go to roaming and to the folder that you specified. Like in my case, that was Mugala. And then the individual plugin names of the plugins that you have released. In this case, Manta. 
And here you can already see the different types of state that I already have. For example, preset files, they, they look like this in my plugin. This is interesting because it is plugin related state, but it saves something about the instance related state. Then I'm also saving the background image of the plugin in this folder because it can be changed. And this is the file that is created by the applications data object. As you can see, this is also what it said with the extension settings, which is also the case. And then you can see what kind of state it saves. It saves something about my color scheme, the bounds, default values of parameters, something about my formula parser, the last user that was being defined in my preset browser. Yeah, you can put all kinds of stuff in there. Now going back to the code, now I'm in the plugin editor, scrolling down to the constructor just before set size. Usually you would put the numbers right in there. And I also have default values, you can find them here, 946 and 574 at the moment apparently. But yeah, as you can see, I'm getting the user settings from the app props object from the audio processor. And then I'm just loading the values that are currently saved there. And only if there are no values saved, then it chooses the default values for set size. Considering that I'm loading values, I obviously also have to save values. So in the resized method, there is some method call called save bounds. And in save bounds, I'm doing the opposite operation where I also get the user settings from app props. But instead of getting the value, I am setting them. And this time there is no default value, but just the values that I'm setting, which is width and height. Now let's talk about developer state. This is the type of state that communicates common ideas among multiple plugins of various plugin ID. As an example, I want to show you my feature called Manifest of Wisdom. It is based on an idea that I had many years ago when making music. I realized that there were times where I was just not inspired and didn't know what to do. Well, there were also other times where I was just vibrantly spouting out ideas nonstop. I was wondering, what if you could get inspired by your past self whenever your current self feels lost? The idea of the manifest of wisdom was born. A plugin feature where you can just input any wisdom that comes to your mind. Like so. The manifest of wisdom has the potential to lift your spirit manifest and whenever you're feeling down you can come back to the manifest of wisdom as well but this time to inspire yourself with a random message taken from the past Stataco Akkorde wirken wie schnelle Pinselstriche very true. Now when you click on the reveal button, it takes you to a folder called shared state. As you can see, it is in my developer folder, Mrugala, but not in the folder of a specific plugin. You can write and read messages to and from the manifest of wisdom from all plugins that support the feature. Let me show you how it is done. This is Erkenntnisse Comp, the component that lets you input and output wisdom. Erkenntnisse is German for wisdom. In the constructor, we are constructing a juice file object with a path of choice. The get folder method returns the string to the desired path, in this case app data, which is a special location type. Juice file special location type makes sure that it also works on other platforms like OS X, where it would not use a folder with the same name, but some equivalent of it. If the folder doesn't exist yet, it is being created. This is where I define the function of each button. It might look a little bit different in a traditional juice project because I'm using a custom implementation of button, but I think it's going to be all right. The manifest button saves the current wisdom to disk. As you can see, you have to manually handle a lot of edge cases when you are dealing with state in such a way. For instance, I have to check if the current wisdom string is empty or if the user has already manifested some wisdom the last minute only if everything is all right, I'm appending the text to the file and inform the user about a successful manifestation of their wisdom. Then there is the Inspire button, which loads a random piece of wisdom. It searches the folder for valid types. 
which are ones that are ending on .txt. As you can see, you could also come up with your own file extensions, which is kind of cool. Here you can see how to use juice range director iterator to iterate over all the valid files. As you can see, I'm using a randomly picked index in order to pick a piece of wisdom from the pieces of wisdom. Now let's talk about global state. This is actually pretty much the same as developer state, technically speaking. I would still consider it its own category because it is something different conceptually. I'm here in my favorite DAW, Bitwig, using Serum to make a sick wavetable with its extensive wavetable editor. Now say that I made something cool. I go back to the main page and save the current wavetable to a file with some name. I don't know what kind of name. So I can reuse it in a different project or instance later. At first glance, this might seem a little bit like plugin state, because I'm creating these files with the intention to use them again in the same plugin, but a different instance. But is that really so? I'm typing in serum presets into the start menu and I get to the folder where all the custom stuff from serum is being saved. The wavetables are being stored here as well. Now I can easily drag these into an instance of Vital and it works like a charm because wavetables are defined in pretty much the same way in both synthesizers. That is why I call this global state. Wavetables, impulse responses and stuff like that that is just not meant to be used in only one plugin but that is just meant to be shared across multiple plugins of various developers who just happen to use the same technology. Where are these presets? They are in the documents folder. The idea of state being global is usually communicated to the user by the fact that the state is being stored in the documents folder rather than the app data folder because the app data folder is a hidden folder and therefore less approachable or accessible to a common user than the documents folder while the documents folder invites the user to get creative with its content. By the way, you have to be really careful when adding features to your plugins that rely on being more than just instance state. Because it might be that the user uses a door with so-called plugin sandboxing like Bitwig. Plugin sandboxing essentially is a very useful feature both for the users and for the developers because it separates the process of the door from the processes of the individual plugins. For the user, that means you are a little bit safer from crashing your door just because some plugin crashes. And for the developer, it mostly means that it's very easy to debug your plugins because you don't have to close and reopen your door every time you compile your plugin again. But it also means that if you implement any crucial plugin features that require the user to share state between instances in an extensive way, then some users who use rather strict settings here on the sandboxing settings might not be able to enjoy your plugin and get confused by it, thinking maybe that it's a bug. All right, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Also big thanks to Josh for giving me the opportunity to speak on his channel. I hope that I was able to inspire some of you, not only with the manifest of wisdom, of course, but especially with the different types of plugin state that have the potential to really boost certain workflows in your plugins. Especially the plugin state is often overlooked by many developers. I showed you that resizing the plugin as an example is really cool, but there is so much more. You can use it to save the current color scheme, the last string that was used in the preset loading file chooser, or for holding the current procedurally generated background image. Well, that might be rather specific. Anyway, bye.